Um, I think for a few reasons. Um, we had an idea of having sort of um, a heavy, heavy armor character, very heavy armor character. Um, and so we explored that for a while and we thought of the angle of making it sort of a dark paladin sort of class. And that idea took a life of its own and we went very far with it and sort of become something completely different at this point. So the way we describe it is as a war machine made human. What if a modern armored division tank was a medieval warrior? And so we came up with this idea of him being a mid-range melee character. He's heavy armor, he crushes his enemies, he has a big heavy flail. Um, and he has a shield that's, that's as much a weapon as it is a defensive mechanism. In addition, he has a lot of holy wrath-based uh, damage that he does. He's got some ranged abilities too, so it's a neat mix of melee and ranged. Um, and he's become uh, very much different from the Paladin at this point. He's become the Crusader. So, and we already know that you are going to patch new 2.0 into the game before the expansion gets released. Are you going? To consider to add any other features like Paragon 2.0 or stuff like that before the expansion is ready? Yeah, yeah, we'll consider all the features and figure out what's most appropriate. Like anything that's that's broadly systemic like that tends to have to be uh, in the main code base anyway, and there's no reason for us not to, you know, to give it up. So yeah, probably more things will go uh, for free before the expansion actually ships. Will there be any new companions or any new content for the old companions, so the Templar or the Rogue? There's um, a lot of new content for the old companions. So we didn't add a new companion. We have this idea that more is not better, better is better, is, is how we say it. We figured we did not do enough to make the existing companions deep. We had a lot of grand plans for them and we sort of ran at the time in the first game. They, the followers came in fairly late. Um, so we're giving them a lot more stories. They're getting actually side quests um, in, in Act 5 as well. So they're getting more VO, they're getting sort of richer backstories and side plots. You get to meet, for example, the scoundrel's brother. And that's new, no one knows about that yet, so that's our official leak for today's interview. <laughs> the scoundrel. Um, can you explain a bit what Nephilim Trials are? Yeah, you want to take that? Sure, so Nephilim Trials are I'll let, let Kevin talk about the story part part of it, um, but the idea is that um, essentially took a lot of inspiration from if you guys remember the Jar of Souls uh, event, is how can we create these sort of micro challenges to help us to sort of vary the pace of gameplay. So the idea is that you'll be exploring the world and you'll come across a sort of Nephilim portal and you'll sort of jump into uh, one of these Nephilim trials and we have many different variations. Well. You know, one of the classic ones is you're going to be fighting sort of waves of enemies, right? And you have a time limit. And depending how well you, how many monsters you kill within the time limit, you'll be rewarded with a number of resplendent chests. So yeah, it's a really sort of cool way to add some challenge to the game and some variety to the game. Yeah, with bonus, the better you do, the, the better rewarded you are. Um, Story-wise, um, people met some of the Nephilim spirits that have been left behind in the world of Sanctuary in the first game. So at a, at a certain point, all humans were Nephilim. All humans had powers. It was the first generations of humans that were born that had that. Eventually, they lost their power. And as they were losing it, the leaders of it left behind guardian spirits for in the future, if the Nephilim arose again, they could get guidance. These are the spirits that help you run these trials. Uh, the expansion is only one act, right? Yep, one so big act. It's a brand new story, so are you not afraid to talk for the story? And actually, uh, how long does it, make, does it take for a normal play to finish the act? So, we haven't finished the act yet, we're not done making it, so it's hard to say exactly how long it is. But I think more than ever, the game does not end when you kill Maltheil and defeat death. Um, the replayability systems um, are being quite vastly expanded. Loot Runs is the first one that we're talking about, the one we announced here at Gamescom. Loot Runs is just one of the systems, by the way, and, and the way that it works is um, it's endlessly random dungeons. We take every single tile set we have in the game, including all the new exterior ones, which are now randomized in Act 5. We combine those in about 15 minute long dungeons with multiple levels with a variety of monsters. And it's monsters that don't usually work together, so you have to change your tactics. It's monsters in areas where they're not usually placed, so you have to change your tactics, so it's more refreshing. They're densely populated, and they all end in a boss fight. 
um, which is also random, and then you get random loot. So it takes the promise of Diablo's randomness, what people think of when they think of the ideal of randomness, and it makes that into condensed 15-minute chunks, and that has a lot more gameplay in it than just the story. So almost every item from the expansion you showed was bound on account. Is this a consequence of enchanting or smart rock, or is there another reason for that? That's, um, that, that is something we're, we're, we're experimenting with. Um, I would say the, uh, the Hellfire Rings were something people really responded really well to. So we're, we're trying to see how we can sort of extend that, that system and, uh, and, and sort of get some, some initial feedback from you know, the, the people playing at Gamescom. Yeah, you get better items, but it's your better items. It's, it's one of the ideas we're trying to um, what were variations of environments will we see? The Hordrax Sanctuary and Streets of Vesma shown in the videos look cool. What else can we expect? Um, we're just sort of teasing the other zones, but we can mention them. So um, I'll cover the Blood Marsh. Uh, the Blood Marsh is an area outside of the city of Westmarch. Um, it's a very cool area. It's, it's one of our more fun and dangerous looking zones we have in the game. There's actually a hint of it in the opening cinematic. Um, where the Black Soul Stone was buried, where Malthael uh, came and stole it from Tyrael, is underneath the Blood Marsh. At least as it sits in the game right now, that we do tend to change things a lot. You want to talk about? Uh, and then the other area, yeah, the other area that you, you know, players will be exploring is the Pandemonium Fortress, which is kind of like at the, the heart of the creation, and that's just going to be a, it's a really great counterpoint to the sort of more gothic uh, feeling of Westmarsh. And then again, the players are going to go on this really awesome journey. From West Marsh to the Blood Marsh to Pandemonium. It's a place that the angels and demons have fought over forever. A lot of people have been missing uh, the dark side of Diablo 2 and Diablo 3. Uh, is the expansion the direct answer to that? Mm, the dark side. I mean, Diablo 3 opens with a zombie apocalypse and it's the end of the world and a meteor is falling and the armies of hell are coming. Explain dark side. I mean, it's grim, it's dark, there's bodies everywhere. I think you run into seven zombies before you've taken your first five steps in Diablo 3. What darkness are we missing? People have been hiding Diablo 3 maybe to call a fool, and well, here we are, the death. So, was it wanted at the start to make something very, very dark, even more dark than what, what we have in the original game? Um, it's, it's not a response to any lack of darkness in Diablo 3. Uh, Westmarch was, we, we have a lot of hints about the city of Westmarch throughout Diablo 3. It's something we did want to do. And for many years now, we've been wanting to do a city tile set, a random um, city, so that it works with all the Diablo randomness, so it still feels like a real city. We actually tried to do that for a while uh, in Diablo 3's development. We put it aside, reserved it for Westmarch, and as soon as we started the expansion, that's the first thing we tackled. So part of it was the fact that it was a city. We did know we wanted it to be Westmarch years ago. Um, and then Death, as the villain, has sort of made it definitely very grim and dark. And it's heavy and gothic anyway before Death ever invaded. It's a martial city. It was founded by the Paladin Order um, when they were on their first Grand Crusade, bringing the Zachrun faith to the West with fire and the sword. So it was, you know, it, it's founded by Rackus. Um, the soldiers at Bastion's Keep are actually from the city of Westmarch. So, you know, we, we know we wanted to do Westmarch for a while. And it was not in response to anything in particular from Diablo 3. You know, I think to follow up on that, it's, it's yeah, it's definitely not a not a sort of reaction, but more than anything else, a an opportunity for us. I think when, as Kevin said, when they started thinking about the expansion and they knew that they wanted Westmark, they knew they wanted Crusader, but it's when when they the team sort of came across the idea of, of really focusing on Malthale, on, on the Angel of Death, it kind of it brought everything together and really allowed us to, to deliver not just a, a, a Sort of gothic setting, but you know this is you know super apocalyptic, and you know this is a haunted apocalypse that is that is happening, and just it all kind of it helped bring everything together with the complete package. But the whole expansion isn't the same color scheme; it's not the same heavy gothic feel either. Like we just mentioned, two of the other zones that are in it, there's more zones, and variety is a very important part of a game that's about replayability. Yeah, and I guess I would say for us, gothic doesn't necessarily mean just brown, black, and gray. Yeah, you know, gothic's more about the feel. You know, and, uh, and what's at stake? Heavy, grim, foreboding, um, to some, yeah, those are good words. Yeah. The end times. Yeah. Uh, the current you identified, the player will face a lot of the current world, like 
in the outside area you know, that there are boring places. So did you were we were also in rugby and the kids which are yeah, the, the main one we worked, I mean, there's new shaders and things, and I'm not technical enough to know what those mean as such. They just look cool. Right. But um, the main one we, we showed off in the demo uh, was the seamless transitions from interiors to exteriors. So we felt like there was too harsh of a divide. You were either inside or outside. And in a couple of ways, we tried to blur those lines, which makes the game feel a little more realistic um, as well. And, you know, it helps with the immersion. So you walk from an outside zone, you walk into a house, the weather changes, the light becomes torch light all fades in real nice and then you go into another area in the sewer and you don't have to have as many loads that's nice as well uh, it looks better so it's that aspect of it but we've also in the reverse direction we've made the exterior zones of act five the new ones we've made are now randomized so you know we i think that there was good things about doing non-random exterior zones in diablo 3 you really had a sense of place like the stinging winds felt like a place with the, the mines and all that stuff. You knew where you were. Um, but we did miss some of the randomness we used to have in Diablo 2 of randomizing the zone. So we're trying to find that the right place in the middle there. Are you going to make... Uh, are you going to make improvements to the Battle.net service as well, like Stark of has gotten a plan and group system and stuff like that? We're working on a lot of improvements. Um, we didn't announce any yet, because we're still working on them. We want to know a little more about that we're sure what they are before we talk about them. But there's a number of improvements to Battle.net and social systems coming. Given the theme of the new expansion, that with Mapple being basically the angel of that, Will we maybe meet any necromancers in this uh, expansion? Because it sounds like it will fit uh, well in, into it. What do we think? You can talk about the, the event that's in last month. Yeah, we have, well, I don't want to give any spoilers away, but I guess that. Okay. Um, maybe. 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 But you know, obviously, obviously, bad things are happening. There's a lot of death, and uh, I think necromancers are drawn to death. So. Necromancers are about balance. Um, if the army of dead is taking over the world, that's not balanced anymore, mm -hmm. and they need to do something about it. Yeah, so they'll OP. Yeah. Um, regarding lore, in the cinematic, uh, Tyrell is hiding the black soul stone with the horror dreams. Yeah. And wasn't Dekat Kane supposed to be the last of them? He was. Are we going to know more about the Order? Yeah, um, before the expansion ships, you are going to know more about the Order. Um, Tyrael has refounded the Haradrim Order, so there are new Haradrim. The character we meet right at the beginning of the demo is Lorath Nor, and he is um, a new Haradrim character that we spend a lot of time getting to know as well. So the Haradrim are being reborn. Initially, Cain wanted to pass that mantle down to Leia, and then we all know what happened with her. So, <laughs> that didn't work, right? Yeah, spoilers! I guess, well, I didn't specifically say what happened to her. Oh, shit, I She's did. not going to take over the Haradrim, let's just say that. Alright. For reasons that are in Diablo 3. I have a last question. Very good. <laughs> I, I know it's, um, it's not a very good question for you, but I need to ask. Uh, are you, again, and do you work on the community? Or is it something you put outside of your mind? So the PvP question is yeah. that the day that we can actually be so to be here and have really cool announcement, it will be a really happy day for you guys and for us as well. Um, it's still something we're exploring, we're experimenting. We, we're just we're trying to find the best expression of, of, of PvP within the game of the Apple. Something that feels like it belongs. In, in, in the, we have not stopped thinking hard about it. It's, it's something we'd still want to find as we can get. Thank you guys very much. Awesome. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. And uh, when can I uh, have a t-shirt like you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, maybe it was fun.